Hi, this screencast is going to walk through configuring a web form settings. My name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. So what can be customized? The web form module ships with reasonable defaults, but everything is customizable. It's important to emphasize that you don't have to start customizing everything when you start building a form or experimenting. You should gradually go through the settings and adjust what you need. And for example, there's reasonable messages that are displayed in the confirmation page, but you can customize that. Um, this is a breakdown of the settings for a web form. And it starts off with kind of mirrors the workflow where you have your general settings where you're setting your title of the form. Then you're going to go into your form and adjust some of the form behaviors and settings around that. And then, when someone submits a form, you're collecting a submission. So you can adjust how submissions are handled. And finally, you're going to display a confirmation page. I know this takes a while, but it's, it's like the goal is to get you familiar with the flow. Like, okay, you get a submission, goes to a confirmation. Now you can adjust the confirmation page settings. And after that confirmation is displayed, you're going to send an email or do something else with that submission using a handler. And then the last two are just kind of tweaking a web form where you can in inject custom CSS and JavaScript and set up custom access controls for the entire form. So I'm going to walk through the tabs a little bit just to give you kind of an overview of what those settings might be that what they are within each of those tabs. So you can, you know, in the general settings there is title, description, disabling the saving of results, picking a template. You can customize the form's URL aliases. You can turn on Ajax for the entire form process. Also, third-party settings, when you install certain modules like Honeypot and Antibot, they'll appear under general settings at the bottom where you can turn on these features for an individual web form. Now, when you get to the form tab, you can set open and close dates, scheduling when the form is available. You can customize every message and label displayed on the form. You can also set some behaviors. One of the more common ones is to pre-populate the form using query string parameters. If you have a multi-step form, you can tweak the progress bar. You can enable previews. And you can even also define custom form properties that are added directly to the form tag or for tracking. Now with submissions, once again, you can customize all the, the labels and messages around submissions. And submissions have some features where you can set submission limits. You can set those. Those also have messages. You can turn on the saving of drafts. You can also, with drafts, you might want to also purge stale submissions, so you can turn on purging. And finally, there's an event logging mechanism where you can turn on the logging of submissions. When people update a submission, it can start tracking it. And confirmation, people are pretty familiar with it. So just, there's basically five types of confirmation. There's a display a page, display a message at the top of the page. Sometimes you'll reload the current form or redirect to the home page. Um, you can display an inline message. And then you can even get a modal dialog. If you're using Ajax, it's kind of useful, where the form will refresh and pop a modal in front of the screen, say thank you for your submission. Or you can even just redirect to an external or internal URL. And now with the CSS and JavaScript, it just allows site builders and front-end developers to inject a, a little CSS or JavaScript to tweak a form's look and feel or behavior. It, it's a way, you know, when you're building forms, sometimes you can't get everything right in the theme and you need to move a margin or something. So you can tweak, like, you know, the font sizes, the types, you can adjust the margins, padding. With the JavaScript, there is condition, you know, there's support for conditional logic that can, you know, manipulate client side validation. But sometimes you need to add your own client side validation logic to a form and you can use the JavaScript injection to do that. And then access controls is really deciding. You know, who by role, user, or permission can view, update, delete, or purge submissions, or, or you know, view, update, and delete their own submissions. So I'm going to give you a little demo and an overview of it. I'm going to go into this. So we're on the contact form. You know, I've shown this a few times. I'm going to go to settings, and here's your general, where you can, you know, title, description, category. This is the URL aliases. You can turn on Ajax. You can also, you know, the author owns the web form, so you can change that. And I think I have Honeypot enabled. You can turn on Honeypot for this. If we go over to the Form tab, you're going to start seeing. It's worth definitely scrolling through all of these and just reading it. And these, these bubbles help describe what's going on. They're using help bubbles because you don't always need to know until you're just starting out. Like, let me see. It does give you the defaults. So the default for open is this form has not yet been opened to submission. So if it's waiting to be opened, you'll see this message. 
And then you can also add custom attributes and styles to the entire form. You can also set up an access denied behavior to redirect to a login. And then these are all little nuances to a form that behavior. Some of these are JavaScript, some of these are client side. So for example, you can prevent duplicate submissions so that the submit button is disabled. You can disable the back button in the browser. You can warn users when they're exiting and going to lose their form changes. You can disable client side validation. If you have the you know inline form errors module enabled, which I do, you can disable that on a per form basis. Sometimes that is worth doing for certain forms. Display a required indicator. You can add a details. You see, you get a lot. You can even add a reset button. These are all just little. You check them off, and you get little helpers. Um, you can autofocus first element. Now we're getting into you can just customize every little detail of the wizard, the labels, the buttons. You can turn on previews, and then once you're there, you can turn on the preview label, the message, the title, what values are going in. And you can also even get into the nuance of how the form is going to work. You can actually decouple this form from Drupal. It'll render Drupal will render the form, but if you change this method to be custom post, it won't post back to Drupal's form handler. You can post it to any URL. So if you had a Node.js server, you could post this data to that Node.js server and that could handle the data coming in. Very advanced feature, but it's just helpful to be aware that it's available. Submissions, control all the labels, the behaviors, access denied, once again, redirect to login, submission limits, purging. You can even have autofill from the previous submission. And confirmation, a lot of people will customize this. This, for the contact form, it just redirects to the home page. And it displays a very simple message. Your message has been sent, but you can do a lot of other settings here. Emails and handlers we've talked about. There's other pre presentations about it. This is where you control how an email is sent. Um, CSS and JavaScript is just, you know, you can add custom CSS to the form. If you want to make the font size bigger, you can go in here and start writing your, your selectors and stuff like that and access controls. Um, and this just shows you all of them. You can even control who can test a form and see that test tab. I know it's a lot to digest, but it's important that you walk through this and get comfortable with these settings. So this is the big question. Should I customize everything or you know, should I customize nothing? Well, the tips, you know, I'm kind of hinted at know what's possible and know what's impossible. Listen, there's some things you probably can't customize, so you got to figure that out. Keep it simple. Don't go crazy. Get the form working. Also, if you're doing it, get the form working and the workflows working, and then go customize all the messages after you're comfortable with how the form works. Um, you know, default, there's also, you can use Drupal's APIs, so you can define default settings for your forms, personal, you know, on your site, so when someone creates a new form, it automatically gets your recommendation. So if you want always there to be a preview on a form, you can make that happen using, you know, hook web form create. That's just an entity hook. And templates are extremely useful for default settings because those also get copied. So you can create our, you know, default contact form and people will copy it and it'll pull in all those defaults, which might be a preview page. It might be you'll set up a confirmation, notification email, even with your business's, you know, email addresses already built in. So, you know, some exercises for just getting familiar with settings and behaviors, you know, test the pre-population. That's a feature a lot of people use. Definitely test the adding of CSS and JavaScript to a web form. Get familiar with submission limits. It's kind of nice to turn on Ajax, you know, for a form and get used to that. In some cases, it's really useful. And, you know, have fun playing around with the web form module. So take care. Thanks.